All right, what's going on today, YouTube? Welcome back to your favorite cyclist YouTube channel. This week, we're talking about if you need mountain bike specific shoes or if you can get away with whatever shoes you wanna wear. But before you get into today's video, if you are new to my channel, make sure you head down below, hit that subscribe button for me. If you already are subscribed, make sure that little bell icon right next to that is checked off. That way you get notified every time I upload. That way you don't miss any awesome cycling content we got on this channel. So right on to the video, we're talking about mountain bike specific shoes. Now if you have a mountain bike for any length of time, you have seen people wear special shoes for mountain biking. And no, we are not talking about clipless shoes today. We are talking about good old flat pedal shoes. So good old shoes that look just like a normal shoe, but they're made for mountain biking specifically. So today we're gonna to talk about the differences between a standard pair of shoes and a mountain bike specific pair of shoes here. And we'll talk about whether you actually need a mountain bike specific pair or if you can just get away with what you got right now. So we're gonna go ahead and we'll start off with number one. So we're gonna talk off with price and availability. So obviously with your standard pair of shoes, you're gonna have them. You're just gonna have them. You're gonna have a pair of tennis shoes in your life. That's what you're gonna be riding with. So you already have them. They're there, relatively affordable. You can pick them up anywhere from like 20 bucks upwards to who knows how much money. But relatively, you can buy, pick them up in a pretty affordable pair and get yourself out and riding as well as do multiple different things on them. Now, let's look at our mountain bike shoes. So these ones here are the 510 Freerider Pros. I will say the 510 Freeriders are probably the most common mountain bike shoe out there because they're very affordable and most people find them very comfortable and good entry level mountain bike shoe. So a mountain bike specific shoe, you generally can't go to your local store and pick up. You pretty much have to go to either a local bike shop or order them online. That's pretty much the ways you have to go. Along with that, price tag on these is a little bit more. I think the free riders themselves start around 70 bucks or so right now. And if you go up from there to like free rider pros, these are about 110. They kind of go up from there and there's all sorts of different price ranges in there, but they are a bit more money for something that realistically you're just gonna be mountain biking in. They're not really gonna be used for anything else besides for mountain biking. So there's kind of the price and availability there. Well, then you're gonna ask what makes a mountain bike shoe so different than just a standard pair of shoe. They look very similar to each other, right? So one of the important factors of mountain biking and riding a bike in general is your power transfer to your foot. So if your foot does this and can fold all the way back on itself, that's not really good. You don't have a very stiff sole, therefore all your power has put down your foot is not getting transferred into the pedal properly. So that's one thing with a regular pair of shoe. Pretty much any pair of shoe you get is going to be able to do this and fold all the way back. Now, if you take a look at the Freerider Pros here, if we take a look at these and try to do the same thing, that's about as far as we can go and that's really pushing it. And that's it. That's all you can go. You can't even fold it back on top of itself. That is it. And realistically, if I was just trying, that's about it right there. So they have a much stiffer sole on these, which makes you be able to transfer power to them much more efficiently than just your standard pair of shoes here. Other difference is going to be when you're mountain biking, you're generally within rocks, trees, dirt, whatever you want to call it, your foot's going to smack into something. It's guaranteed it's going to happen. I did this on these pair of shoes already. I've already smacked them into something. So you're going to smack them into something. And if you're just wearing a standard pair of shoes here, there really isn't much protection for your foot. And I'll tell you the number one thing that's going to get hit is probably your toes. So these guys here have no protection in the toe. I can push down on that toe. If you were to hit a rock with that or a branch or a root and hit that, that's your toe. Your toe's going to get squished in there and it's going to hurt a little bit. If we take a look at our free riders here, the toe box is actually reinforced. You guys can might be able to see there's a kind of a line right around the edge. That has a reinforced toe box on here. So with that being the case, if you hit that, it does not compress at all. It is super solid as well as having reinforcement on the sides to add a little bit more protection to your toe box. So very important, keep your toes nice and safe. You don't want your toes breaking while you're out on the trail. It's very uncomfortable, you don't want that. So protection is gonna be the next big thing that mountain bike shoes are gonna offer over just a standard pair of shoes. And if you're gonna be on mountain biking, you're gonna want that protection from the terrain you're riding in and make sure your feet stay nice and comfortable and not injured while you're riding the bike. Next thing we'll talk about, we'll talk about the sole of the shoe. So sole of the shoe, these are standard Nikes here. Not much grip, honestly, for gripping onto a pedal. Most pedals are gonna have pins on them, and those pins are gonna be able to grip into the shoe. There really isn't much area for those to grip into. I'll say that from riding these in the past, these are not very grippy shoes. They do not grip the pedals very well, and my foot sometimes does slip off the pedal. So, they don't have very much grip, and honestly, this is not very sticky material. These are more of a basketball walking shoe, and so they're not made to have that much grip. Come take a look at our free riders here. The free riders have the stealth sole, so that's what they call their sole, but as you can tell, it has a whole bunch of dots on there. But you can actually see some of the dots where my pins were, and these are very good at gripping onto your pedal. 
your pins on your pedal find a very good purchase. And to this, this is also a softer material, made to conform a little bit and stick to your pedals very well. So if you're looking for something to stick to your pedal, a pair of shoes like this is gonna work very well. Now, I will say that Vans, if you've never seen the bottom of Vans, I'll show you actually the bottom of Vans. Bottom of Vans looks like this, kind of a checkerboard pattern if you've never seen them before. These work very well for pedals as well, for grip. That's what they work good on. So if you're looking for something basic, to get you going. A pair of Vans will help you stick to the pedals quite a bit just because of the design on the bottom of them. The pins on your pedals will be able to lock into the different grooves and different checkerboard pattern we got here on the bottom and be able to provide a good purchase. However, they have the same issue as just your standard shoes in that they do this. So they're not very stiff shoes, which is why you don't see them on like professional racers a lot of times. But if you're looking for something basic, a pair of Vans, even something a little bit better, these are just your standard slip-ons, but something with a little bit more, more support will work pretty good to get you at least started with something that's a little bit stickier to your pedals. Next thing we'll talk about, we're gonna talk about water resistance or snow resistance if you're still in the snow, like I am still kind of in the snow right now. These shoes are not water resistant. Water is going to get in them and it will find a way in there and your sock will be soaking by the end of your ride kind of sucks. You don't want a wet foot. Wet feet just ruin everything. So you don't want wet feet. These guys here are very water resistant. Now I didn't say waterproof. I said water resistant. These keep water out very well and snow out as well. The main times I've used these have been with the good old fat bike here in the snow on our snow rides we filmed. And these do very good at keeping my feet warm and toasty while I'm in there, which is very good. You don't want your feet getting nice and sopping, soaking wet when it's 20 degrees outside. You want them to stay nice and cozy and nice and warm. Along with that, in the summer, you splash through a creek crossing or something in the mountains, your foot's not gonna get wet. You're gonna be still happy. You're not gonna have a soap sock. Work perfectly fine for you. And the last thing we'll talk about today is of course, your mountain biking. Guess what's gonna happen? You're gonna get dirt, you're gonna get mud, possibly get a branch possibly destroy your shoes while you're out there. Do you want to just destroy your regular shoes while you're out there? I don't think so. Most people are not going to destroy their everyday pair of shoes while they're out riding or have to get them super muddy or super dirty and they'll have to wash them off. Pain in the butt. You don't want to, have to deal with that. You get yourself a pair of specific mountain bike shoes and you could realistically leave this as dirty as you want. For instance, that's still dirt and mud from our snow ride. I have not cleaned these, not touched them since that ride. So. You can leave them dirty, don't have to worry about it, and it's nice just to have a pair of shoes dedicated specifically for mountain biking. They get dirty, go outside, spray them with the hose, you can leave them out on your porch, let them dry for forever. You're not worried about your day-to-day -day shoes sitting out there having to dry them so you can get going. Nice little bonus that you don't have to worry about your everyday shoes getting soaked, muddy, torn, whatever. You got a pair of shoes right here specifically designed for it and specifically set aside for going mountain biking. So let's answer the question here. Do you need a specific pair of mountain bike shoes or can you get away with what you got already in your closet? And the answer to that is most people are gonna be fine riding with just a pair like this. It's your standard pair of shoes, nothing fancy. However, if you're looking to step it up a little bit or looking for extra protection for your feet, a mountain bike specific shoe is going to be the nice way to go. It's going to provide you that extra protection on your toes, that extra pedaling strength, the extra efficiency. And ultimately, most people go for this style of shoe. They don't go back. This shoe is specifically designated for their mountain bike and they're ready to go. Of course, I'm gonna have a link in the description down below to the good old 510 Free Rider Pro so you can check them out for yourself, see if you guys are interested in these shoes. But realistically, for most mountain bikers out there, a good solid pair of shoes that's not mountain bike specific is gonna work for you. However, again, as I feel most mountain bikers out there, most people riding a bike out there, they're not gonna benefit from this too much. They're gonna be perfectly fine with just your standard pair of shoes where they can get off the bike, walk around, have no problems at all, and you have to get on the bike when they want to get on the bike. Well, we're gonna have no problem at all, just with our standard pair of tennis shoes. But if you're liking this, take it up a step. Good old specific set of mountain bike shoes is the way to go. So hopefully you guys learned something from the video or at least found it entertaining. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Appreciate the support. If you have any comments or questions, let me know down in the comments section below. Love talking to you guys, loving answering your questions, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching today.